22, the Leeds Rhinos 12 in the opening game of round two of the Betfred Super League on a pitch that was more Haydock Park than Craven Park. Oh, yes, there should have been thoroughbreds of plenty on this one, but we don't have thoroughbreds. Oh, no, not in Super League, but we do have Jai Whitbreads. Oh, what a performance from Jai. Two in two weeks for Jai. An incredible, incredible display. Uh, he was by far and away from me the best prop forward on the field. We said at the start of the season this acquisition from Wakefield Trinity was going to be key. Uh, we thought it was going to be far better than Reese Kennedy, of course, who's gone to the London Broncos and already Jai is showing his class in this one, 109 metres. Last week, it was 105. He did 41 tackles in this game. Last week, it was 32. He's just getting better and better. Throw into the mix on that as well. Six tackle bus for good measure and a clean break. He was in incredible form. Jai Whitbread, sir, we salute you. What a performance from Mr Whitbread on a really, really tough track. And that's what it was. It was a war of attrition down the middle. And, you know, in games like this, it really is about post-meter contact. It's all about leg drive, isn't it? And, you know, the stats, they tell a story. The prop forwards in this one, 370 metres for the old KR prop forwards, 160 for Leeds. And, of course, we must say, Leeds were down on the troops rather than in the front row. We know that. We get that. We understand that. But that's where the damage was done. When you actually take into account all of them, props, second rows and loose forwards, 547 metres paid 433. That really is quite bruising. And would you believe it, actually, the Leeds Rhinos had a better completion rate in this one. But like I say, post-contact metres, 684 for Hull KR, taking on 493 for Leeds. That's bruising in those conditions. You know, if you're giving those metres away, if you're defending and you find it hard to defend, sooner or later, you're going to crack. For me personally, this was like going back to the 60s, 70s and 80s. It was a, it was a purist game. That's with the way the pitches used to be back in the day. It was wonderful. I mean, and this is what I mean. It's about celebrating the game, no matter what game that you're given. This was like going back to the 80s. It was gritty. It was muddy. You know, moulds would have loved that pitch, wouldn't they? Uh, absolutely outstanding, outstanding stuff for the purists. I really enjoyed it. It was a really good quality arm wrestle. And there were some nice moments as well, some really nice moments on the eye. I mean, let's consider the tries. The Jeslet and the little poke through. You know, he was aiming for the post. It was a measured kick. And there goes Jesse Sue. Thank you very much indeed. And of course, the try of the game. What a try. Brody Croft, over the top you go, sir. Have that, Ash Hanley. And Ash Hanley goes off. And yet again, Ash Hanley showing his composure. Last week he did it, didn't he? Turning players inside out. And on this one, you know, he did Peter Hickel on the dance floor like something not right, didn't he? You know, sit yourself down, son. I'm coming past you. You just stay where you are. Outstanding stuff from Mr. Handley. Yet again, three tries now. And we're only two games in. Ash Hanley having a great start to the 2024 season. Was he in your, was he in your fantasy league team? He was in mine. Happy days. All good fun, of course. Get yourself into our Fantasy League. Chance to win a replica shirt for non-members. And, of course, a chance to win your season ticket if you are a member. Uh, there you go. More announcements on that in Super League Raw Weekly. Back to this game. Though. Like I say, really, really good. Penalty count. This is interesting. 17 penalties given against uh, the Leeds Rhinos. Only three to Hull KR. Now, Rowan Smith said in his post-match press conference that, you know, he'd have liked it a little bit more fairer. Hang on a minute, Rowan. Steady your horses here. We're going to carry on the horse theme. Steady on, sir. Because here's an interesting stat for you, OK? In the first two games, in the first two games, Hull KR have only conceded seven penalties. Seven. Best in Super League. They were the best in round one with only four and only three in this game. You've got to give Willie Peters, loads of credit. He has been doing some exceptional, exceptional work with his troops at Hull KR. You know, really has. And, you know, they were saying on Sky after, you know, they're the blueprint. You know, they've, they've, they've adopted what needs to be adopted for this season. And that penalty count goes in their favour. When you consider, you know, their, their, uh, their simping was for lying on. You know, that, that's what you've got to consider. So, you know, well done to Willie Peters. You know, we're too quick to say it's ruining the game and the game can't be played in the right way. Let's be absolutely honest and fair here. Hull KR, you know, they've ground out two victories, but they've done it in the spirit of the new rules. And I think you've got to give credit to Willie Peters for that. You really, really must. Uh, great effort from him. I think, you know, I will come back to Hull KR in a moment because, of course, we need to speak about their number nine. But uh, in terms of Leeds Rhinos, we said on uh, the the news update uh, yesterday that this was a big game for Brody Croft. Brody Croft was non-existent, really, in that opening opening match against the Salford Red Devils. And Croft in this one, for me, we started to see the real Brody Croft. He was getting his hands on the ball, two two assists from Brody in this one. The first, it wasn't necessarily the, you know, the, the layoff so that Harry Newman could come back on the inside and score the try. It was the fact that he was involved in two phases of that play. And, and that's what Brody's all about. He likes to get his hand on the ball. We saw him trying to find gaps in the line. He was far more active in this one. And of course, the 
the measured kick was a thing of absolute beauty, wasn't it? You've got to give him a lot of credit for that. You know, he saw the opportunity. You know, he saw the apple right on the tree. He picked it. He put it in his pocket. There you go. Have a bet that, Ash Handley. Off you go down the line, son. Outstanding. And it was all because of Brody Croft's mastery. Oh, yes. So, Mr. Croft, I mean, that's something that you, Leeds Rhinos, can take out of this. We know that um, Hanley is in great form. Harry Newman had a decent game in this one. Momorowski's not quite found his um, found his straps yet. It's going to be interesting to keep an eye on Momorowski. We gave him big raps going into the season. I think I expect a little bit more from him at the moment. Frawley, his kicking game, again, it's not probably where he wants it. But, you know, again, he was involved, not as active maybe as, 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 as Brody Croft, but you can start to see there things improving in that halfback combination. And as for Cameron Smith, well, again, another captain's not from Cameron Smith. What a fantastic try-saving tackle from Cameron Smith uh, early, you know, in that game. Real, real quality there. That's what he's about, both sides of the ball. 117 metres from Cam Smith, 44 tackles in this one. Uh, you know, that's what you get from Cam Smith, isn't it? Both sides of the ball, very in the same spirit as we were talking about Jai Whitbread a moment ago. That's Cam Smith. That's what it's all about. You know, great, great player. So, yeah, things to be happy about there if you're the Leeds Rhinos. You know, for me personally, it's been a steady start to your season there's no uh, there's no shame going to uh, the seal group craven park and, and coming away with a zero there really isn't many money many many teams are going to do that this year but i think you know based on their season last year i think rowan smith will be quite pleased especially with the players that he's still got to bring back into the fold back now though to all okay, yeah. and the man of the match you know it was all it was for me it was crystal clear watching the game who the man of the match was and i was so happy to see that sky called it and called it right i mean at the post game show they were on about tyrone mega i don't know i thought tyrone had a good game but again you know nowhere near a man of the match performance from Tyrone May just an assured quality uh you know standoff performance room and that's what he gave you but Jez Litton you know congratulations to Jez Litton from the kicking tee at the start of the year after that uh, uh Petter Hickey debacle in round number one and what do you know 100% conversion rate five kicks have a bit of that one of them from the sideline absolutely pinpoint have a have that one for two points uh, but of course as well he got his assist that little one off the post as well from Lytton but it was his scores from dummy half in this one you know he really did terrorise him five five runs from dummy half he was always on the front foot he got 75 metres from a, and from a hooking perspective that is very very impressive indeed but it's also his defensive efforts 39 tackles from the, from the, the from, from the man and when you consider who he's coming you know, he doesn't shirk his responsibility. The amount of times he was first into the tackle against the big prop forwards of these Rhinos, not a problem at all. Jesler and tackling technique, outstanding. Had a blinder of a game. And for me, fully, fully deserved getting the man of the match. I would expect Albert Goldthorpe and Man of Steel to follow because we here at Super League Raw do, of course, give Mr. Jess Litton three points. Oh, yes, we, of course, this season are doing our own man of the match. We're doing our own player of the season. And Mr. Litton, well, he's just posted his first three points of the season. And I have to say, completely and utterly deserved from Mr. Litton. Right, who did the other points go to? Well, it'd be no surprise, based on what I said at the opening of the show, that two points go to Jai Whitbread. Sometimes, you know, we at Super League Raw recognise the work of the forwards and, and there was not a better forward on the field last night than Jai Whitbread. Yes, Jesse Sue got the try. I get that. I understand that. Yeah. However, Whitbread, he was more at it. He was doing far more work. And trust me, his teammates will say exactly the same. Jai Whitbread, last night, really, really colossal for Hulk AR. He laid the platform for the rest to follow, and they did. And, you know, it was a bit of a toss-up. Who are we going to give the 1.2? We could have given it to Pet Hiku. I thought Hiku had a fine, fine game, 148 metres coming out of backfield. Of course, he got his try as well. Uh, but based on the fact of the improvement week on week, and it was an improvement week on week on the field, I think Brody Croft will take that one point from us. Uh, two brilliant assists from Brody, far more at it, deserves that one point. So three points for Jez Litton, two points for uh, Jai Whitbread, and one point for Brody Croft this week. Congratulations to you, Robbins fan. Two from two up the Robbins is what they say, and rightly so. As for the Rhinos, like we've already said, nothing to worry about. A big improvement already on this year, last year, sorry, and uh, lots of troops still to come back. Of course, Lockie Miller pulled out the last minute. Oh, actually, thinking about it, before we go, let's give praise as well to the young man, Mr. Edgil, at fullback. My apologies. Should not have forgot about that. What a composed performance. Only told at the last minute that he was going to go in. Yes, he made two errors in this game. But, you know, let's be fair. He's a young man learning his trade. I thought, for me, he had a stellar game. You know, a lot of pressure put on the young man's shoulders. 66 metres coming out of backfield from 16 carries. Um, yeah, he was, you know, really, really good. Remember the, the year before in the same fixture, Luke Hooley. You know, it was a standout 
real poor performance from Luke. And everybody's saying, oh, Davey, Davey, me, he had a shocker. Nobody was saying that Mr. Edgell had a shocker. Oh, no. Alfie had a great game. So congratulations to the young man. Really, really impressed with him. He's got a Super League career ahead of him. So there you go. That's in the sheds. What are your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts on it? What do you make of the pitch? What did you make of the game? What did you make of the, the high shot? Yeah, let's have a quick talk about that, actually, before we go. What am I doing wrapping up about talking about that? What was the difference? Please, please, please tell me. What was the difference between the uh, Donaldson shot uh, that got him his his yellow card and uh, Ellis K uh, Kane Ellis last week for Wigan. Can somebody just tell me answers on a postcard on that one? One of them doesn't even get uh, yellow card, doesn't even get seen by the match review panel, and then Donaldson very very similar, very very similar, and he goes for ten. Um, you know, it's all in good debating. Is it a red or it's a yellow? You've also got to say, was it a yellow? Because you know this is what I mean, and I, look, it's a real torrid for the for the, and I'm not having to go away with the officials who are actually on the field of play because they're in the grind. All they can do is, you know, if they don't see it, you send it up to the video referee. They've got cameras aplenty. They've got to get these right. We shouldn't be talking about match officials. We want to see the greatest game on earth played in the right way, in the right spirit, with the right result, with the right rules and regulations applied consistently well. That's what we want. We're talking too much about referees. I don't want to talk about referees. Rowan Smith, all he's done in press conferences this season, he's talked about referees and rules of the game. That's not what we want. What we want to talk about is quality rugby league, the Hanley try, the little bit of genius from Mr. Little with the goalpost. That's what we want. The bruising, bruising tackles that we're seeing. You know, this real tussle. That's what rugby league's all about. That's why we come back every single week, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? The players on the field, the gladiators themselves. So come on, sort it out. We need, we need the officials to sort this out. We certainly need the bunker to be acting quicker and more decisively and more consistently. And we need the match review panel to really think long and hard now, because for me, there's a precedent that's been set with some of these decisions that's already been given. And if I was uh, Mr. Donaldson, I'd be taking a video recording of the Cade Ellis one from last week and saying, hey, you're not banning me. There you go. That's what I said. What do you make of that? There's another controversial one to end in the, in the first episode of In the Sheds for round number two. We hope you've enjoyed this production in the Sheds. It's back for 2024. And we're hoping that you enjoyed it. We will be back, of course, tomorrow tomorrow night to review the Friday night fixtures in this incredible style of ours here on Super League Raw. Please do get involved, get in the chat, let us know what your thoughts are and we will be seeing you tomorrow. Hulk AR22 leads Rhinos 12. It's two from two for the Robins and they're flying high. Bye for now.